Hey guys, I want to talk to you a little bit about a topic that has been pretty hot in the Age of Empires community for years now, and it's still going on because this feature that I'm going to show you is still in the game, even though, in my opinion, and in opinion of quite a few others, this is completely luck-based and shouldn't exist in a game that is considered to be like the hardest strategy game of all time. Age of Empires is just random enough from the map layouts, from the civilization matchups, etc. that I don't think it needs any extra randomness in it, especially to the point where the games are basically decided right off the bat in Dark Age at like five villagers. I'm talking about laming, specifically boar laming. Uh, we're not here to talk about sheep laming, deer laming, because they don't have as much impact and they're harder to do more investment, but just boar laming with the initial scout. So let's jump straight into a tournament game that was played yesterday, King of the Desert, the first round of groups, $80,000 on the line, and here's what happened. And it's game two between Nikov and freaking Andy, and they were doing this laming thing, all three games that they've played, and uh, let's see how game two played out. So I've downloaded the replay, I wanna watch it from freaking Andy's perspective. This is very important because this shows you the power of the lame and how unfair this mechanic can be. You're going to keep the fog of war just to illustrate a normal game from your perspective when you're playing the game and how it will feel if this happened to you. So let's see what happened in this game. So freaking Andy sent his sheep to scout around as usual and sent his scout cavalry on the front which is the proper way to play for sure. He wants to find his boar if they're on the front, also any additional resources that are on the front, sheep as well. So he finds the boar on the front, as you can see, it's towards the center of the map. And that is, that is bad, but usually players counter that by pulling the boar earlier than usual. Now this villager is not going to pull the boar, it's going to build a mill because he's playing Portuguese, so he wants that extra bonus as soon as possible. Um, Andy finds the sheep in the back and continues to scout, but at the same time, there's something happening on the front. He sees the board disappearing, and that means that Nikov just did the so-called lame. Nikov is pulling the board away with his Eagle Scout. Now, this Eagle Scout, and the map layout. Let's talk a little bit about that. So the players spawned furthest away from each other that they that they could, I suppose, on this map. So you have to go diagonally. That means up to like 40% more walking to get to the opponent's base. Nikov is also playing a Civ that doesn't have a scout cavalry. He has an Eagle Scout. That means that it takes him even longer to his base. So this is like the worst case scenario for the lamer, because it takes him the longest possible to reach the opponent's base and take the boar and bring it back home. Of course, he had the luck that the boar was right on the front of the opponent's base, so he took it right away. Andy, unfortunately, was in the back of his base with his scout at that point, but can you really always be around your boar with your scout? You do still have to scout. You cannot just scout with your sheep because your sheep can get lame too if you're scouting too far with them. So you do have to use your scout to go in the back at some point, at least on the sides. As we can see, yes, Andy was in a bad position, but even if he was a little bit closer, he would still not be able to catch up to this Eagle Scout. After all, he doesn't even know where the board went because uh, Nikov can pull it a little bit down, a little bit up, and you can't fight it anymore. So if we look at how much food a rhino has, it's 400 food. This is 400 food, free food, that you took away from your opponent, and you brought it back to your TC, and you, and you consumed it. So technically, after you get this rhino, you have 800 more food, free food, than your opponent. A lot of people will say, but you can also do the same to your opponent. You can. Sometimes. Sometimes you cannot. Also, if you want to react to this, you still have to find where your opponent is, where his boar are, and if a boar is in the back, 
for example, in this game it was in the back, you can't really get it to your base in any reasonable amount of time, and also you're gonna have to go past the opponent's TC, the opponent's definitely gonna notice that, I mean, you're gonna have to go around his TC, around his base, and your opponent is going to react to that. He's going to react to that. He still has his Eagle Scout. Is there a counter to this in this specific situation? Probably not, because freaking Andy didn't go for the lame. He went to uh, do a loop around his base because, well, when you spawn in a corner, you really need to do a loop around your base with your scout. You, you can't avoid it. You have to do it eventually because you really need that info. How does Andy react here? He sends his scout instantly towards his opponent's base. And he's even looking for the boar with his sheep on the front. But obviously he's not going to find it. And also he's just doing some extra scouting because he has to scout with the sheep now. At least he knows that uh, the eagle won't be coming back anytime soon. So there's that. But he has to find his opponent. He knows the general direction that his opponent went. But it, that could also be a bait. So you, you never really know. Nikov is going to expect this. But when you lame, that you're going to get counter lamed. And how you counter that is by taking a small loss of pulling your boar a little bit earlier than you normally would. So you have the opponent's boar and then you have two of, two of your own. And you found them with your sheep because it's not that hard. Unfortunately, Andy didn't have the greatest luck in finding any of the resources. He only managed to find this gold so it told him okay he's on the top side somewhere on the top side so this is your normal game like nothing special happened on andy's side he played the most normal game out there and he's now struggling because he has to work with one boar he's only pulling it now look 12 villagers that's when you pull the boar usually around that point and he's playing Portuguese, so he can get the berries. So this is one of the civilizations that can really get away with losing a boar and still have a semi-normal game. But if it was almost any other civ, it would be a problem. Now, this is a critical moment. Andy does find Nikov's boar. Nikov made a mistake, and he tried to pull it, but it was too late. He made a mistake of pulling it a little bit too late. He was just about to pull it here with this uh, villager right here. And uh, Andy's like, okay, I found his boar. The, this is salvageable. And he has to go around the opponent's base, back to his base. And by the time he gets there, it's already a little bit too late. He has to use up a lot of the sheep, but it's not the end of the world. If you can, if you can pull this off, You've equalized, but this is more because Nikov made a mistake of not pulling it in time. And look at this situation now. He has to face the opponent's scout, in this case, Eagle. Um, if it was a scout, it would probably... Hmm, it would play out a little bit different, but the Eagle is stronger than the scout Cav in this case. So you can't even turn around and fight him. Because if he does, he also risks of getting hit by the boar. So th there's really no way of getting back home without almost losing the scout. And Nikov smartly makes a militia as well. And now he's in a world of trouble. Uh, he's not pulling the boar anymore. He has to abandon that. There's, there's so much going on right now. And he has to defend. He has to uh, figure out how to balance his eco. This situation is just terrible. I think we can all agree that this situation for the Portuguese player is just... It's terrible right now. Uh, it will get worse over time. Because you're still not feeling the, the lack of food that much. But you will, eventually, for sure. <laughs> you will. That's 800 food that your opponent has that you don't have. 800. So to the point of you can counter a lame and you're fine... Sometimes you can, but a lot of times you cannot. Also, funny thing, freaking Andy didn't find all of his sheep because he had to go and counter lame while he was scouting for his sheep. 
as we can see here. He hasn't found these sheep yet, and he hasn't gotten them yet, but he found them with another sheep. So he still has to go back with his scout for these two sheep. He hasn't pushed a single deer himself. Because some people say that you can just push all three deer if you get lame, then it's fine. Yeah, but your opponent's going to push all three deer too. Like It's not like he's not going to push deer because he lamed. It's just going to be like two minutes delayed. Andy, minus 800 food. And Nikov did the drush, so it looks even worse. But if Nikov just did a scout opening, for example. Okay, he's playing Incas. If he just did a normal archer opening, he would probably be a minute earlier in Castle Age, if nothing else, if they just played a passive game, he would just put so much pressure on uh, Andy that he would eventually crumble in late feudal or something. That's how these games play out. They're very linear from here on out. They're so linear that they're not fun to watch. There's no competitiveness anymore. It's, it's Andy trying to dig himself out of the hole that Nikov got him right off the bat at Let's just see how early this hits. And this is the worst case scenario. Okay, I wanted to show you this game because this is the worst case scenario for the laming player when it comes to the layout and the civ choice. Imagine if he was playing Mongols and they didn't spawn in corners, that they spawn closer to each other. Just imagine that. Let's just see the timing. Okay, let's see what Nikov did and how long it took him to lame the boar. So Nikov... Went forward with his eagle. Um, just the usual stuff. Got his sheep. And now he literally clicked across the map. He just clicked across the map with his eagle. The eagle is running. Let's just speed it up a little bit. The eagle is running. Just straight across the map. He finds the stone. It's like perfect. This is where my opponent's at. He finds the boar. 1 minute 19 for the lame to start. And this is by far the latest that this can happen with the boar on the front. Because if your boar is on the front, the opponent's playing, for example, Mongols. You didn't spawn in the corner. This can happen at 50 seconds. I've had this in the latter game. I think it happened at 50 seconds in. You have... Five, no, you have four and a half villagers then instead of six. All right, there's no way you can do anything about this if your scout is not right next to this boar. There's nothing you can do about this, and you can't keep your scout there because, well, you're technically laming yourself off of all the scouting and you may potentially your sheep. Because if you stick around the boar, what happens if your opponent accidentally takes all of your sheep on the way to your boar? So you have to go and find your sheep. You have to find the deer. Otherwise, your opponent will do something about that. If he's laming. I think we can all agree that Andy cannot do anything about this unless he's doing this himself right now and he's here right now. In Nikov's base, taking his board. That's the only counter to this strategy at this point. I think that's pretty reasonable to say. And now Nikov takes this boar. Andy saw this. Andy saw this. In your usual ladder game, sometimes you don't even notice. Sometimes, and this is the worst that can happen to you, you didn't, you still didn't find your second boar because there's one pixel, there's one black pixel they missed somewhere. Let's say your boar can be down here and you missed it. Or even if your boar is like here, and the opponent came in from this side and it took it from here. What then? You don't even know that you got lamed. And then you have to go and spend extra time trying to figure out whether you got lamed or not. And then when you do realize it, it's already too late. You're at like 13 villagers. These are the small things that can happen in these games that can completely ruin games right off the bat. Because I'll show you how this game played out. But how games play out from here is you have to commit to farms earlier. That means that you cannot be aggressive. You have to let go of map control and very likely you're going to reach Castle Age later. And if we look at both players scouting right now, uh, if you look at the mini map, it really doesn't look that different already. 
Believe it or not, it doesn't look that different. Yes, Andy has a little bit more in the back of the base, but that's about it. And now he has to go in the front uh, and go all the way to Nikov's base. So Andy actually went for a 19 pop up, which I don't necessarily agree with in this situation, but I guess you can pull it off with uh, Portuguese, so I guess it's fine. He got harassed quite a bit by the Militia and the Eagle. He lost the Villager, almost lost the second one. His whole build is a mess, guys. You can tell by all the straggler trees that he has to take. His build is a mess. This is not how a Portuguese build should look like. He hasn't started his barracks now either because of the pressure. And Nikov can apply this pressure, no problem. Nikov is going up at 21 villagers, which is quite late. I'm pretty sure he could have gotten it even at 20, even with the two militia drush. But let's say he's playing his normal build. And there's another thing. Uh, due to not being able to scout the back of his base with the, with the scout cavalry, he only now took the sheep in the back. Yes, he forgot about them, sure. But maybe he didn't. Maybe he just couldn't get to them. Because you don't want to send the villager all the way here to walk here to get the sheep when you're already so far behind. You have to take small risks from here on out to get back. Because if, if you keep this game linear, you're just going to die. 800 food is so much. It's a full castle age of food. And now Andy obviously makes this mistake. Okay, this is obviously a mistake. He didn't click under his TC. Um, that's the first major mistake he did in this game. So he lost the two sheep. But he could have easily lost even more. And look what happens now with the militia. <laughs> he just gets lamed. He can't even push the deer anymore. He doesn't have the map presence. So Nikov is just playing this perfectly. He lamed perfectly. He had the luck to be able to lame perfectly. It's not like we're seeing the, the best display of skill and whoever lames better is going to win the game. No, they both lame equally well. As we've seen in the other games of the series where they both went for lames and stuff. Now we finally see how this is going to manifest itself. The lack of food. He's already burned through the berries because he's using seven villagers and he had the early berries. And now he has to do farms. Already four farms, and he just reached a uh, feudal age. He cannot afford a blacksmith, which obviously he would want to right now, and his opponent is doing fletching already. He can't afford a blacksmith. He can't afford more than three on gold. And his resources are, are just depleted. So maybe making a market and selling the stone would be beneficial already, but that's not how you want to play Portuguese. Yes, he did lose the two sheep. All right, I know that he lost the two sheep that he shouldn't have. That's the one mistake that he did so far. That's the one mistake. He lost the villager. That's another mistake, but it is a drush where you cannot use your scout to defend. So it was it was just a terrible situation. And now we see here he just can't keep he just can't keep up. He cannot make skirmishers at the rate that his opponent is making them. He also has fletching. And the armor upgrade versus no fletching, no armor upgrade. So Nikov is just, he's so far ahead. All right, you can't see it in the villagers because both players can produce villagers, even though, okay, Andy has 20 seconds idle TC. But you can't see it there. You'll see it on the map presence. You'll see it in everything else. And this is a very interesting one. We can look at the stats for resources collected. So both players had decent worker efficiency but the resources collected in theory should be the same for both of them but they're not because the the boar collection rate is much higher than the sheep and the especially the farm collection rate three seconds into a game you decide to click across instead of click around your tc and your scout goes and gets you 800 free food or he doesn't Maybe he doesn't. Maybe you just wasted a lot of time. So now you're at a deficit. 
And maybe your opponent did the same thing, but he got all of your stuff because the map layout worked better, the scouting worked better, all the luck factors worked in your favor or in his favor, and then the game is completely skewed. Who wants this stuff? It's not competitive. To uh, explain this in more plain words, let's say, what happens at the start of an Age of Empires game on Arabia, especially in these higher low uh, lobbies and just higher low players, you have a slot machine that takes 200 food to activate you activate it if you want and there's a 33 percent chance that you get 800 food back and there's 66 percent chance that you get nothing back so you've invested some food you got nothing back okay happens but if you hit that jackpot and it's not that uncommon let's say it's 33 percent okay arbitrary numbers right now over exaggerate but make an example you get 800 food back, but that's not just your food. Uh, you took it away from your opponent as well. And there was no decision here, no skill, no nothing. It was just you pulling it and you got 800 food. Perfect. GG, I won. Because these players, once they get this advantage, we're talking like 80 to 90% win rate, guys. We are, because it's that huge. Because they have to work so hard in a normal game to get an advantage like that, all right? They have to work really, really hard. The opponent has to lose like five, six villagers in Feudal Age. And they have a perfect macro in the back and all that. So usually they have to work so hard for this. But in a lot of the games, it's decided by randomness and luck. Nothing else. There's no skill in this at the top level. There's no skill. Everyone can do it with literally their eyes closed. If these players started laming the boar and turned their monitor off, they would still get it to their base, guys. Seriously. Maybe we could get a test with some of the top players. <laughs> with no monitor, all right? They can probably do it with no monitor. And this game is, I consider it at least, the most skillful, the highest skill ceiling game of all time, at least from the competitive ones that have multiplayer. This has to be, or at least on par with like StarCraft Brood War, I suppose. But I would say it's even higher because the, this game is just tougher to play in so many different ways. And it's it's semi-random with the generation, so you always get a different map, etc. You need to be able to adapt and you need to have certain builds. Why does this have to exist? Do you want to play a game where the slot machine is available at the first second and it can decide games right away, even though it's supposed to be super high skill game. So how can we fix this? I think it's pretty simple. Um, there's various approaches to fixing this. Uh, some tournaments have been using boars uh, spawning in the back of the base only. That can sort of help. Not always, but I guess in most cases that would do. Uh, the, the laming would still be available, but... It's much harder and it's more expensive, let's say. Scout working hours expensive. I think the easiest fix would be to completely disable it by making the boar run back after it goes 15 tiles away from its spawn. No matter how many times you hit it. I think some of the pros think that pushing three deer shouldn't be a thing every single game. So maybe if laming is removed, boar laming maybe something with the deer should be changed. So not every game you get to push all three deer. There's so many things in this game, guys, that they've already patched. Like, have you ever wondered why you can't lame the deer with your scout, but you can with your militia? Like, these are the things that they've, the, the devs have already looked into and they've addressed stuff like this already, even more extreme stuff that you don't see in today's game. So there's, there's already fixes like this. It's not like the fixes that I'm proposing are Oh my god, you're going to change the game forever and uh, it's going to be terrible after that fix. No. This game went through so many patches like that. And more extreme broken stuff, even like balance-wise, uh, certain sieves were extremely broken. They get changed all the time. This, in my opinion, is as broken as any super broken thing before. And this has been going on for years and years and it's been talked about for years and years, but I guess the devs don't want to change it. But I I'm sure that Professional players won't miss this, but it's in the game. It's allowed. They have to do it sometimes. They just have to do it. It doesn't make the Dark Age more fun because the consequence of making Dark Age more fun is making the game less fun.
And I don't know how, how it's fun to watch one guy completely dominate the other guy without the other guy having this, any chance of coming back. Like, wh wh what is fun in this game? He just got absolutely slapped around throughout the whole game, as you'll see. There's so much pressure on him. He's three villagers down, even though they're both playing generic civs when it comes to villagers. He's only now building the blacksmith at minute 15, but at this point he could have already been clicking up to Castle Age, believe it or not, guys, in a normal game. And, uh... Yes, he got a counterattack in. That That's... He has to do counterattacks. Otherwise, he's just not gonna get anything done. So he got a counterattack in. How long is it gonna last? Well, uh, one skirmisher could have handled that, but yeah. The game kind of normalizes here, but at what cost? Look at this, guys. Look at the food count. It let's ignore everything else. And even has a counterattack in the opponent's base. Look at the food count. 500 food versus 22 food. This game is just ruined. It isn't fun. It isn't fun to watch. When someone is playing at a huge deficit. And Ika is very good at maintaining the advantage. He's doing that right now. He's completely maintaining the advantage. Loses the siege workshop. Army in his base. Ten villagers less, or nine. Yes, he might clean this up eventually, but at what cost? He's losing villagers here, he's losing villagers here. Nikov in the back, three TCs. Do you guys think that this should stay in the game forever and this is an integral part of the game? Or do you think it's time for a change and uh, completely removing this? Because Mongols are not going to be weaker if you remove the lame. They're already a great Civ, for example. Because I've had quite a few people tell me, Oh, I'm laming because it's my Civ bonus with Mongols. Mongols can just push deer if they want it, and they're going to get a huge buff from that. So, they don't have to lame. They're already the fastest Civ on Arabia. Literally, the fastest Civ. Nobody can go up as fast as them. Now, whether they're going to change the deer directly or indirectly, well, that's up to the devs, I suppose. Guys, let me know in the comments, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.